This is Friday, February the 14th, 2014, Vincent Corporation, Tampa, Florida. We were sent some pistachios, apparently raw pistachios, and I have had them soaking. Not all of them are, but because they float, but we've been trying to soak the pistachios a bit for uh, simulating the pistachios getting plumed out to a wastewater area where they would be shredded prior to be putting, being put perhaps into a screw press. This is our little um, VS8. It's an 8 inch shredder with a comb in the bottom. I don't know if I can show you what's going on in there. It's a rotor spinning through the blades of a stationary comb, the teeth of a stationary comb. We've run a couple of scoops through and this is what we get. It's actually pretty good. I will collect samples, but I'm not sure about the throughput. It takes a while for the for the uh, pistachio to come out. So we'll throw some more in, you can see what I'm talking about. No, I don't want to kill the machine. <laughs> what it'll do yet. internals 
And I kept talking about the comb style shredder, and of course, if anybody knows Vincent Equipment, which I should, <laughs> would tell you that that's not what this is. On purpose, we elected to use the shredder that has the screen in the bottom. So that's what we have here. Incidentally, this unit is brand new. It just, uh, that's an old motor, but the shredder itself is brand new, but hasn't been prepared in any way. It hasn't been sandblasted. The base hasn't been painted. We just assembled it quickly so that we could run this test. Uh, but it is a VS for Vincent Shredder, as opposed to VCS, which is Vincent Comb Shredder, which is what I mistakenly described in the earlier part of the video. Those three pails produced a pretty decent amount of uh, shredded or chopped pistachio. The interesting thing is, I can grab it like this and I can feel sharp edges, but no matter what I do, nothing seems to want to hurt me. So that's good. What I thought we would do is, well, um, I'm gonna make a phone call first and see what we ought to do. If there's any interest in the press cake or if there's only interest in this. So um, stay tuned. Okay, here's the dry sample. We're gonna run it through. It hasn't been soaked. We're gonna catch it in here. And that'll give you your as received dry. Interesting, huh? Yeah, apparently there'll be some dust when they're dry. I'm going out on a limb there, but I think so. of the stuff after it went through the shredder without any water having been added to it. Very nice looking stuff. Okay, this is a little model CP4 screw press. It's, uh, uh, sorry about the sun, but uh, motor, gearbox driving the screw which you can see there there's the uh, inlet hopper the screw at the bottom of the inlet hopper it forces the material into the screened area with the liquid coming out through the screen draining into the pan and out of the drain there in the back the press cake has to get force its way past this discharge cone which is actuated by an air cylinder there are a variety of styles of discharge cones. This one happens to be um, where the screw is short and uh, the cone just um, puts pressure on the discharge end as it is uh, with no shaft running through it. That's the advantage of this design. Uh, in a very few applications it's advantageous not to have the shaft. So for our purposes this press will do just fine for the testing. I'm going to go ahead and close that cone. There we go. Every uh, press comes with a filter regulator lubricator, like uh, similar to this. Right now there's 40 PSI on that cone. We may discover that it's too much, um, but we'll see. In fact, this is what's interesting is I don't see any liquid to speak of coming out of that press keg. Because essentially, I mean, it was just soaked, but it was, it hadn't absorbed a whole lot of moisture. A little bit. There we go. Yep, sure enough, a little bit. Well, I was maybe I was a little quick to 
judge because we are generating some sort of like a uh, little bit thick, but it's a liquid for sure. We catch a little sample of it, see what the solids content is. Press cake feeding out nicely. This baggie here is a sample of the material after it was shredded, before it was put into the press. Soaked the wet material, obviously. There would be no use at all in putting the, the dry shredded into this press. And truthfully, there's barely a use in putting the wet shredded through the press. But I think it has a lot to do with the nature of what we did. It came in bone dry, and we just sort of soaked it, you know, for an hour or so in some pails. I think that's sufficient, Bill. Huh? That's probably fine. Yep, thank you. Just want to rinse it off. Yeah. of uh, material here to collect and send back. Change out the the pail, the uh, the catch uh, pail here. What Bill had asked was, what would happen if we just took some of the hole as received and put them in the screw press? What would that look like? So let's give it a shot. Well, there we go. That's the whole one going into the screw press. Now that's some of the old press cake. some whole ones coming out. In fact, we're and they're all channeling out of the bottom, Bill. Yeah, I know. Do you want to <laughs> cycle the cone? Cycle the cone open just for the grins. There we go. Let's see if it starts channeling again or if it comes out evenly all around. The noise level inside the press has gone up. Leads me to believe it's doing a better job at applying back pressure. Yeah, it's not cracking the ball over. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun to try. It does give you an idea, though. Kind of a, a, uh, it shows you that you do get some size reduction inside the press. But I don't see any kind of difference. No, yeah. Pretty neat. 